Now I'm going to demonstrate another plugin called the RSS Import plugin. This is a plugin that lets you list posts from an external blog to your own site, provided that the external blog has an RSS feed. And you could put these posts uh, into the sidebar or into your main page, and they will get populated by default with the list of posts from the external blog or the external site. It's actually a very powerful plugin. And it will demonstrate a type of plugin that requires a short code for activation. So let's get started here. You're going to go to your plugins menu. And in this case, you're going to click on add new because we want to search for a free plugin on the wordpress.org free plugin repository. We're going to search for it by name, RSS import. If you don't know the name of the plugin, but you simply know the function, that you're looking for, just go to Google and search WordPress plugin to XYZ and see what you find there. But here it is, RSS import. Uh, you can click on details, import and display feeds in your blog, downloaded 115,000 times, good enough for the working class. So let's go ahead and bring it in. You're going to want to activate it. And once it's activated, you're going to want to see if it adds any commands to your site or if there's any options panels that you need to configure. Um, often they're going to be in the settings menu. No, I don't see it there. Uh, if not there, look in the tools menu. Uh, no, I don't see it there. So this is a plugin that actually does not have any configurable options in, uh, in its panel. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to go directly to the plugin documentation site. Let's check out this link, New Possibilities. And it's going to tell you here the short code that you need to activate it. So this plugin is activated by short code that you put in your page or your sidebar. So let's copy that. You want to keep that precise structure. And these are the various parameters of the short code that will return to this. So what we're going to do is all you need to do is just create a new page. We're going to call this page Copywriting News. And then we're going to paste in that short code. And we're going to, so we just keep the format. And then we're going to go and find some blog or site that we like that we can pull the RSS feed off of. And I like Copyblogger. And at the top here, you see this little RSS. This is an RSS symbol. It looks like a, like a rainbow almost. So click through that and click through here again. This may be. All right, so this is my Yahoo News Reader, or my Yahoo RSS Reader. So the RSS Reader is going to go to your default. You can set this in your browser by default. But I can tell by looking at this that this is an RSS feed. So all I really need to do is just copy that. That's my RSS feed. And put it into the RSS import short code into the feed URL. All right, I'm pasting that in. I'm going to save the page. And I can go ahead and view the page now. And there it is, well, copywriting news. These are all posts that it's pulled from Copyblogger. And I, if I click through, it's going to go to Copyblogger. Now, if you wanted the page to show the description of the post, or at least some of the description, as opposed to just the titles, what you would do is you would go back to the plugin documentation here, and you would look at some of the parameters of the short code here. And I happen to find one called Display Descriptions, which is a Boolean, true or false. I think that's what I want. So I'm going to go back to my site. I'm going to edit the page. Uh, you may need to, to activate the uh, HTML tab or the text tab for this so it doesn't insert special characters in there to make sure you keep it clean. Paste in the description, uh, display descriptions parameter equals true is what they tell you to do. Update the page and then view the page. And now you see they, they have greater descriptions. And these are cut off at 200 characters. You could actually increase that. It's another parameter. But you can see the possibilities here. Now, the other thing that's very cool with plugins is sometimes they activate new widgets or available widgets. So let's say we wanted to put this 
list of posts from an external RSS feed into your sidebar. First of all, let's fetch the RSS feed URL because we're going to need it here. Let me just copy this into my clipboard. And then you're going to go to the Appearance Widgets menu. And there, lo and behold, is a new widget called uh, RSS Import. And we're just going to drag that into the right sidebar. Drop it in. We're going to call it Copywriting News. We're going to paste in the feed URL or the RSS feed URL. Actually, the RSS feed URL goes down here. We're going to leave everything else blank. Display five, uh, display uh, five posts. We're, uh, you can choose to display the description or not, and there's a whole bunch of extra fields that you can put. A whole, you see, there's a whole bunch of parameters here. Gives you a lot of control over this. This is a very nice plugin. It's actually possibly a little too long, but just save it. And let's just visit the site now and see what we got. See copywriting news. It's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So this illustrates the power of plugins. You ought to be able to find a plugin to do almost anything you want, whether it's simple things like re reordering links in your sidebar to or creating uh, sortable tables with uh, fancy headings to more complex things like creating a forum or a e-commerce shop and so on. And most of the time you'll be able to find a free plugin. There are situations in which you may want to invest in a commercial plugin and the next video I'm going to show you actually how to install a commercial plugin.